What's going on food plotters? So today I figured it would be a good time for me to go over a few things what led me to buying what I think is the perfect food plot tractor for me. Give you a couple things to think about if you're in the market or if you're looking around for a food plot tractor. Some of the things that I wrestled with which led me to this tractor right here. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, I'm generally shooting them up north at our hunting property. But for this video here, I thought it'd be fitting to shoot this here at my house. And here we have it, a brand spanking new to me, 2002 model John Deere 4310 with a loader. I have a, a grapple attachment on it. I have a handful of uh, second hand and some new attachments that I got for it, but I wanna go over a few things that I was wrestling with before I ended up buying this unit. Now, first, and maybe for my own personal reasons here, but before I was gonna spend the coin on a tractor like that, I needed to justify it to myself to use it around my house too. Well, to be honest with you, <laughs> to make my wife let me do it. So, I mean, as you can see here, I don't live in a crazy large country lot. For around us, we have a relatively common size lot, right around two acres. Um, we have some large oaks here. As you can see, I got an old gravel driveway that needs some maintenance. So I needed to be able to get something that I could use around home as well up north. That's reason number one. We moved into our place here about two years ago. And there, the inside of the house was completely renovated, but the outside of the house, there wasn't much done. There was no patio put in. There was no landscaping around the house. There was a lot of uh, rock that I needed to put around the house. As you can see, we have tall, mature oak trees. This past winter, I took down about 20 or 30 trees. A lot of them were rotted out and dead. Um, they, had, they needed to be taken down and cleaned up. So I needed to be able to use something around here that had enough power to be able to handle the home tasks that I needed to get done. Now, another factor that went into play is that I am here in Minnesota, and if you've ever met anybody from Minnesota, or if you're Minnesota or from Minnesota, probably the first thing, or nine times out of 10, that we end up talking about is the weather. We all know, you know, everybody knows, it gets super cold here, we get a lot of snow, we get a lot of cold. Heck, last week it was 100 degrees. Um, it's just crazy here. So I wanted to get something that I could store inside year round so lucky enough when we moved to this place it did have this shop um, i had to redo the shop but had a space to be able to stick a tractor in it the downside of the space is right here the door it's a seven foot door so to get the tractor in and out year round i do have to have the roll bars down it, the tractor did come with a a canopy on the top that I have to keep off. So that was gonna limit me of whether I could get a cab for this tractor or what I was gonna have to do. Now, I've seen some of the videos out there where you know people take air pressure out of the tires or they add, add weights in the back to try and sneak it through. And to me, that's great if they wanna do that, but that's just not practical here. I'm not gonna be taking air out of the tires when it's 10 below zero or going in and out, it's just, it's just not gonna happen. So I needed to get something that could fit below this door that I could safely get in here. And like I mentioned earlier, most of the footage that I film is up at our hunting property. Food plots, trail maintenance, habitating, cool manly stuff. But like most of you or most people that are watching, I drive the standard issue American male pickup, a half ton pickup. I would love to get a three quarter ton truck or a, or even a one ton. I just don't use, or I just don't tow enough things that are heavy enough to justify getting one of those. And to be honest with you, I can't afford one. So that's why, that was also another factor what led me to this size of tractor. Okay, so if you're still with me, 
The tractor's home is here at my house. Needed to get something that could fit through that door. I needed to get something that I could tow up to the hunting land with a half ton truck. And really, I needed to be able to get something that I could justify using at my house, which I'm telling you what has been extremely helpful. Last week, we literally had a giant oak tree in our front yard tip over in a windstorm, used the grapple to clean it up, used the landscape rake to create a giant brush pile. It's been a lifesaver, not to mention the landscaping. But I bring up the hunting land because that is also a factor, or that's also a huge factor of what led me to this particular model. See, our hunting property they have, both fortunately and unfortunately, is extremely sanding. Extremely sandy, meaning a lower horsepower tractor using a tiller, which I use to put in my food plots, it can till through the ground pretty easily. Now, unfortunately, it's extremely difficult to get uh, food plots to grow. If you've seen any other videos, you've, you've seen my struggles. But I bring that up because that is one of the biggest factors that I would consider if I was looking at buying a tractor right now of, if you're gonna use that at your house and use it up at your property, what type of soil conditions are you gonna be trying to turn over? So one of my greatest friends of all time literally has 80 acres of land, also about 40 minutes south of me. Phenomenal habitat, great deer, great woods, everything is great. Here's the big difference between their property and mine. Their dirt is a lot harder. It's a lot rockier. There's a lot of clay in it. There is some nice um, soil pH, black dirt in it, grows great crops, but it's just extremely hard to turn. This particular tractor right here with the horsepower setup on it probably wouldn't be the best bet for their land. It's, yep, you could tow a smaller uh, plow with this and it does have the tiller set up on it but it is going to work the tractor extremely hard to turn their dirt where up at ours where it's super super sandy this thing can pretty much turn dirt all day long and really does not struggle at but just remember take the soil type of conditions that you have into play if you're looking to do what I'm doing Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, this is a John Deere 4310. So this is a 31 or 30, I don't know what the number is. Tractor data has it. It says it's like a 31.2 horsepower motor. The big difference or one thing that you need to take a, take a look at is if you're gonna be running a tiller setup here is PTO horsepower. This particular unit has a 29 horsepower PTO. The reason that I went for this is because I already own this tiller. This particular tiller is rated between a 30 to 50 horsepower tractor. And I don't know if that means engine horsepower. I'm assuming it means PTO horsepower. Correct me if I'm wrong. But that is something that I wanted to take into consideration because I wanted to be able to have a tractor that I own that I could use here. Also turn an implement that I already owned that would match up no problem and everything would work. Now, and if some of you are thinking, hey, use around your house, you could use it for mowing, you got super sandy soil up there, why don't you look at the 1025Rs or the Kubota BX series or one of the other subcompacts? Well, the reason is, is like I mentioned earlier, I already own that tiller in the back. We used to use a white Field Boss 31 for doing food plots. We ran into some parts problems, which I'll touch on in just a little bit. But I already own this. I already owned a couple of the other implements. Not that those tractors aren't phenomenal. Um, it's just that I would have had to sell this tiller. Wouldn't have been a big deal. But then you're gonna go down in size of tiller and then you're gonna end up with a tiller that's only specific to that model of tractor. If you ended up going back up to say a little bit bigger horsepower tractor or a larger tractor, that tiller is not gonna work on one of these. It's not to say that 1025Rs and the BX series are not phenomenal tractors. I have another good friend of mine who's probably watching right now. Hi, bud. His particular farm set up at his house is just covered up in big egg. He's got egg pretty much all the way around him. So he really doesn't need to put in a lot of food plots. He just needs to do some driveway maintenance. He's got relatively smaller quarter acre plots that are put in. The 1025R works phenomenal for his setup. My situation is a little bit different and that's what I took into consideration. 
And like I just mentioned, we owned a white Field Boss 31. Tractor worked great. The problem is, is we ran into the parts nightmare, sourcing parts for an older tractor. Now I'm not brand specific. Yep, it's pretty cool. I got a green tractor. But the other reason that I took into consideration and something that I would encourage you to is to stick to one of the popular brands or popular colors. Green, red, orange, blue, there's probably another one out there, but the reason is for parts. At my house right here, there's a John Deere dealership and a Kubota dealership within probably 10 minutes. At the hunting land, both situations, 10 minutes away. My hometown, 10 minutes, 10 minutes away. Now I did have a breakdown here at my house luckily where I had the steering assist uh, hydraulic line blow off. So other than busting a couple knuckles up or other than busting, a couple knuckles up, getting it off. I was able to pull it off, run over to the dealership, get a part for it, get the correct hydraulic fluid for it, and I was back up and running literally within probably two hours. Took me longer to get it off because it was tucked up way under there. Now, I know, that's just a hydraulic line. You could get those anywhere, but what if it was something else? What if it was something with the engine? What if it was something with the drivetrain? What if it was something major? If you can't get parts for the tractor that you're buying, then you're kind of, I guess, crap out of luck. So just take that into consideration if you're doing what I've done or what you're probably doing. If you're looking at an older tractor on Marketplace or on Craigslist, that just make sure that parts are available for it before you make the mistake that we did in buying the older white tractor. Now the biggest consideration that I took into play here was cost. Should have been first and foremost, but was cost, absolutely. So everything else that I laid out, what I needed the tractor to do, what I wanted to use it for up at the land, um, the features that I wanted, that's what led me to this used tractor. I bought this from a John Deere dealership in Minnesota here, uh, Minnesota Equipment in Rogers, Minnesota. Like you, if you're looking for a tractor, you've probably been to all the John Deere, all the Kubota, all the New Holland, dealerships looking at their used tractor on Marketplace, on Craigslist, taking the model number, putting it into YouTube. That's exactly what I did. Now, I couldn't afford a new tractor, but I also knew that I couldn't afford to get a tractor that I was gonna have to be wrenching on all the time. Um, I might've mentioned earlier, I have two small boys at home, so in my hunting land is an hour and a half away. It sucks when you go up there and you go and try and work on something and you get there and something doesn't run. So there is a cost to that. And that's something else to, to take into consideration when you're looking at used. Make sure that, yeah, you might end up paying a little bit more for something like this compared to say like an older model tractor that looks like a really good deal on Craigslist or Marketplace but are you gonna to have to wrench on it? And if you're gonna to have to wrench on it, is it gonna be when it's go time to get your food plots in or do what you wanna do? That's also something that I weighed in. Now, I've owned this for about eight months now and I absolutely love it. It is almost perfect for what I need. If I could give one tip though, or one, I guess, considerate, last consideration that I would say is that if you can go bigger, go bigger. I already have been looking or thinking about how do I justify this or how do I talk the old lady into letting me go with a bigger tractor that can still fit within all my envelopes. It's just, it makes life easier. If you can go bigger, go bigger. But um, that's it boys. I just wanted to give you a few tips. Gonna have a cold one here. She's got a cup holder. That was probably the, the biggest selling point, but that's it for this one. We'll see you in the next one. Good luck with your food plots. See ya.